Hello everyone and thank you for watching my channel. My name's Dave and today we're going to talk about winter backpacking, staying warm, and two hacks on how to keep your under quilt under you and keeping your electronics and water warm throughout the night. So please stick around. So a couple of weeks ago, my nephew Joe and I went to Mohican State Park for winter backpacking and we had a great time. It was very cold at night, approximately 10 degrees on the first night and approximately 23 degrees on the second night with the six inches of snow that we woke up to in the morning. My sleep system is the Darium Dream Hammock with hammock gear quilts. My top quilt, to stay warm in my hammock, my top quilt was a zero degree hammock gear top quilt and it works fantastic. Uh, I can't say enough about how warm this top quilt is. In fact, I have a zero degree under quilt on order should be here within the next couple of weeks and looking very forward to using that as well. However, during this trip, I don't have a zero degree under quilt. And what I did was I layered two 30 degree under quilts on top of each other. The one behind me is Joe's 30 degree under quilt and I have one just like it, um, only in black. According to Enlightened Gears, website you can layer under quilts and top quilts and get to a desired temperature that you want to get to to stay warm according to their site two 30 degree under quilts layered on top of each other should get you down to negative 10. It, it did work and worked very very well i stayed very warm both nights uh, i highly recommend that if you don't have a zero degree under quilt or if you're going to go sub-zero and you have a zero degree under quilt or top quilt and you're going to go sub-zero and you have a 30 degree, 40 degree, 10 degree, whatever it is that you do this layering system. It works very well. I was very warm both nights, had no problems with, with the cold at all. So to keep my under quilts underneath me during the not, not, night, not only during very cold weather, but also during 40, 50 degree weather to keep my under quilt underneath me. I take a, a simple, small, number two s beaner and I clip them to the hammock itself. My hammock has some hooks on them um, from Dream Hammock that is supposed to allow you to take the shock cord and hook over into the, uh, the, the shock cord from the, from the under quilt onto the hammock, but it doesn't stay very well. So I decided to take an s beaner and hook it through both under quilts as well as the the hook on the hammock. It stays under me all night long. I don't have any shift. I don't have any issue. Just take into consideration that your under quilt has to have loft in it. So don't bring it up too tight. You can extend your, your uh, suspension uh, as needed or add some suspension if you needed to do that so that your under quilts lay under you in a loft manner and not tight up against your body. You won't get any warmth if it's tight up against your body. So that was hack number one. An s beaner. you can also use a piece of string to pull that up together. If your hammock does not have a hook on it in that area and you do have a ridge line, you can also take a piece of string or cordage of something, hook it up to the D-rings, go up and over your, your um, ridge line and that, that should help keep everything in place. It still could slide a little bit. That's why I like the idea of the s beaner. It does not slide at all. It stays in place. So moving on to my clothing for that, that weekend, um, we're going to start with my layers during the day and we're going to start with from the waist up. From the waist up, I just used a, a wicking away Under Armour um, t-shirt, short sleeve t-shirt um, that I actually bought at Sam's Club for like 10 or 11 dollars. So this was my base layer. This was my wicking, wicking layer. My second layer was a Nike micro grid long sleeve shirt that has some wicking capabilities as well, but it was keeping my core body warm um, at, that, at that level. It is long sleeve and it does have the thumb holes to keep the sleeves down. My next mid layer, if you will, is a North Face fleece. Uh, shirt. I've had this shirt forever and I really like this shirt a lot. Um, you've probably seen me wearing it in other videos to stay warm in as well um, and it's a great shirt. So I kind of had two mid layers being that it was so cold um, and this is primarily what I hiked in were these three layers. My base t-shirt, my mid 
mid-layer Nike runners, micro grid, and this North Face fleece. That's primarily what I hiked in during the day. And then at night, what I did is I added this Patagonia, Patagonia Nano hooded jacket. This is an amazing jacket. It's very light. It compresses into itself. Um, I'll do a review on it um, at another time, but it is a very light jacket. It is synthetic insulation um, and it's, it's very warm. It kept me warm at night while we were standing around the fire, um, hanging out, not doing a lot of activity. Um, and, and this jacket layered on top of all of that kept me very, very warm. So that's from waist up. Waist down, we'll call it to my ankles. Um, I did wear a pair of Nike runners tights um, and it is the cold gear Nike. It's not the heat gear. So the cold gear to keep my legs warm during the day. And then on top of that is a pair of hiking pants that I actually bought at Sam's Club. Again, it's, these were like $20. Um, they're weatherproof. They're not waterproof, um, but they are very stretchy and very, very comfortable. It has an extra side pocket down along the side. Um, and they're, they're great for hiking. Um, I really like it. So I, from my waist down was my Nike tights, cold gear tights, and then a pair of pants that I bought at Sam's Club. Hiking pants, weatherproof, not waterproof, but weatherproof, kept the wind out uh, and any of the major snow and, and ice that might be, I might be hiking in. From my feet standpoint, um, I decided to wear my Lone Peak 5s. Um, these are not insulated. These are not waterproof. Um, they're just basically trail runners or not basically, they are trail runners, uh, very well known across the hiking community. Um, and I really like these shoes cause they're very, very comfortable. And I didn't want to be wearing large clunky winter boots or anything like that. Um, during this hike, cause we were, we were putting in a, just a few miles. Uh, I think on Sunday we did something like seven miles or something like that, uh, down there at the bridal trails and the mountain bike trails. Um, so these were my shoes. Again, not waterproof and not, um, not insulated. So to keep my feet warm and dry during the, during the day hikes and during night just hanging around the fire, um, I wore two layers of socks. The first layer I wore is a pair of socks that my daughter bought me for Christmas a couple of years ago. And the label on them is Soul Story 7. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but it's called a Soul Story 7. They're for hiking. Um, I really like them. They, they work very well. I hike in these all of the time um, during the spring and summer and, and now the winter. Um, this was, if you will, my base layer uh, sock. On top of these, I wore my seal skins and these are rated for a little bit of winter hiking, but these, are, these kept my feet dry and actually added another layer of insulation. Um, believe it or not, the first night, which got down to approximately 10 degrees, um, while we were hanging out by the fire and just kind of walking around and what have you, my feet were very warm in this pair of socks and these seal skins with my Lone Peaks on. Um, during hiking time, these socks helped keep the sweat off of my feet, absorb the sweat. These kept my feet warm and dry as well. Um, I had no problems with my feet getting cold at all that weekend. Um, I highly recommend uh, just a good pair of hiking socks and I highly recommend these seal skins. Um, anytime I'm going hiking, if it's cold, I will wear seal skins with a pair of socks. If it's going to be wet, seal skins with a pair of socks or a liner so that I don't get blisters with the seal skins. Um, that worked out very, very well. And I still had the light, lightweight shoe on my foot. I wasn't around uh, hiking around in clunky boots. And again, it got down to 10 degrees one night, 23 the, the next night. For my day hiking, a lot of time I, for my hands, I did not wear any gloves at all. My Nike um, micro grid, again, had the thumb loops in them. So I kept my hands warm here and it was perfect for me to hold my trekking poles, kept my hands fairly warm. But in the morning, if I needed something for my my hands um, starting out uh, hiking before I really started getting warm. I have this very, very lightweight fleece. Um, again, cheap. I think I bought these at Dick's Sporting Goods probably 10 or 15 years ago, and they're Thinsulate. Um, very light, just fleece gloves. They work perfect. Um, when my hands started getting warm, I just took them off, shoved them in my pocket, 
and continued the hike and these worked very well for my hands. Um, my hands typically are, are warm and hot anyways, so I don't typically have a problem with my hands um, at all. And so these worked out very well during my hike. Um, on top of my head during the morning when it got cold, <laughs> My wife picked me up this hat at REI the last time we went, and it's a, just a small bill hat, and it's got the ear covers on it, um, and it's just an REI co-op brand hat. However, it's waterproof, not just water resistant, but waterproof, and it has um, a layer of Finsulate and fleece inside that keeps your head warm. Uh, this is an amazing hat. It kept my head very, very warm, standing around the fire, hanging out, um, and and. I recommend this hat primary you know it's it's a really good hat I I just uh, I can't say enough about this hat it's a goofy looking hat um, I kept messing around the fire and holding it up like uh, Benny Hill or somebody but it's uh, it's a great hat I really enjoyed wearing this hat and it kept my head warm so let's go to at night um, at night when sleeping in my hammock the first thing I did was take my socks off um, both my my uh, my seal skins, as well as my, my base layer socks. And I had a pair of smart wool, heavy socks, loose fitting socks that I wore to sleep in. Um, I think taking care of your feet is very, very important whenever you're on a hike and a backpacking trip. Um, so I, I got a fresh pair of smart wool socks for both nights um, and just slid them on, took my other socks off and uh, just put them away in my pack. Um, each morning I woke up, I had a fresh pair of socks, um, warm, which I'll get into in a minute here, but I had a fresh pair of warm socks um, for each morning. So Sunday morning and then Monday morning, I had another fresh pair of socks that I put on and each time they were warm. And I'll get into that hack in just a minute. Um, but at night sleeping, I wore a pair of smart wool socks that I changed into. From my top and my bottom, I just left my my uh, base layer uh, tights on as well as my hiking pants. I probably could have taken my hiking pants off. That's how warm I was in my under quilt and top quilt. And I left on my, uh, I'm sorry, I took off my, my wicking base layer and I just put on a cotton t-shirt. Uh, everybody knows how nice it is just to put on a fresh t-shirt and how, how um, comfortable that is. So I took this off, tucked it in the foot box so it stayed warm all night. And then I put my two mid layers back on and that kept me warm all night. Um, the second night, believe it or not, I did put my Patagonia jacket on and I put the hood up a little bit. Um, I didn't have anything on my head, um, but I did put my hood up a little bit and um, uh, kept my, my upper body and my head warm for, for a bit. Um, going back to while I was hiking, um, I didn't hike in this hat all the time. I did bring a buff, so when my head started getting warm, I tried to prevent from me getting sweaty, but when my head started getting warm, I did put a buff on and just covered my ears, just kind of like a headband. Um, the buff was key in that, in that regard. And then of course my, my shoes and, and my other socks and everything, anything clothing wise went into my foot box, my shoes I tucked underneath my hammock. Um, so off to my next hack, uh, hack number two. Uh, Keeping my water from freezing that night, um, both on the 10 degree and the 23 degree night, um, and keeping my batteries and my electronics from dying overnight. So I've made myself this Reflectix. Everybody knows what Reflectix is. I've made myself this pouch. Um, and I mentioned this in my loadout video um, and what I was going to do with this. Um, but I made myself this Reflectix pouch, and it's not as big as I was hoping, so I may need to, to make it a little bit bigger. But essentially what I did was I took my electronics and I put them in my pouch, right? And then I took my water in a plastic bag and I put it in the pouch as well. And like I said, this is where I need to make sure it gets bigger. But I took my fresh pair of socks that I was going to wear the next day and I put one sock inside of the other. So let's simulate that that's in there. So both socks, one sock was inside the other. And then I took a hot hands. I'm not gonna open this one. Um, I took a hot hands and I shoved it inside of this, out of, inside of both socks. And then I folded those socks over onto themselves. And I shoved this inside of the pouch and it kept, it kept 
the water from freezing and it kept my batteries full. Put the pouch lid over it. This is where I got to make a bigger pouch, but I put the pouch lid over it like so. And uh, I have some Velcro on here that I, I finagled, but I kept this in here like this and the hot hands kept my electronics warm and it kept my water from freezing. My water was still cold, but it was not frozen in the morning so I can make coffee, oatmeal, whatever breakfast I was having. So a nice little hack here. Um, get yourself some Reflectix. Make yourself a pouch for your electronics and your water. Get yourself some hot hands and then take your socks, put them inside of each other. And this is why I said my socks were warm in the morning. And talk about putting warm socks on on a 20 degree morning is, is the best feeling in the world. Um, then I just, my seal skins were in the foot box. I took and put my, my warm seal skins on and then put them in my Lone Peaks and then I was off for the day. So thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to subscribe. Take a look at my Instagram channel and I do have some merch. Um, I did not mention this in any of my other videos, but I do have some merch out there. It'll help the channel. I'm not doing this to get rich. I'm just having a great time trying to share my experiences with everybody and uh, just some tips. You know, I, I, this, this one here just kind of came to me and I said, you know what, let's give it a shot and see if it works. And it worked out just fine. So thank you again, everyone, for watching. And since you was outside, go have some fun.